Catherine from Atlas's Persona team is a game in which you take on the role of Vincent Brooks, a 32-year-old software engineer. Now, Vincent is in a bit of a rut with his current girlfriend of many years, Catherine. Catherine spelt with a K. One night, while he is brooding at his favorite bar, The Stray Sheep, about whether or not he's going anywhere with Catherine, he meets Catherine with a C. And the very next morning, he wakes up next to C. Catherine. Meanwhile, Vincent is having nightmares every night about a nightmarish world filled with towering blocks that he has to reach the top of. And if he falls, he dies. And if you die in the dream, you die for real. This nightmarish world is made exclusively for men who are cheating on their significant others. So Vincent has to deal not only with tower nightmares, but also his love life as well. So basically, this complex, mature tale of adultery and sex boils down to a puzzle game in which you push blocks, which is great. You're confronted with this tower of blocks, and you have to make a path to the top of the tower by pushing and pulling these blocks around. It sounds really simple, but it's not. There are certain rules that involve Vincent's manipulation manipulation of the blocks. You can't occupy the same space as a block. Blocks fall when you push them. Blocks float in the air if they connect to another block at an edge. In order to succeed in solving these puzzles, you really have to get into the logic of this nightmarish world. At the start, it doesn't seem so bad, but things get really difficult really quickly. This game might be too difficult for some people out there. About halfway through the game, you reach some kind of nirvana. You're suddenly equipped with all the tools you need to solve all the puzzles. You become brilliant and you feel brilliant as you're solving these puzzles and basically you have to be brilliant if you plan on seeing the end of the game. I played on normal mode. Apparently even easy mode is pretty tough. It feels a little bit more like an action arcade game than just a basic puzzle game. It has a, a good tactile feeling of, of, of solving things and progressing. A lot like Tetris. If you've ever played Tetris for a long time, and sometimes whenever your mind needs something to do, you just think of making lines, or you just dream of Tetris blocks falling, I guarantee you, if you play Catherine, you will have those same dreams. You'll just see blocks everywhere and try and make pathways up like the ceiling tiles in the bathroom or whatever. It gets in your head. Because it's so difficult, it feels like a life or death situation. It's a really great way to set the mood of the nightmare world. You really feel the terror of all these guys stuck in there. The designs of everything are great. All the characters, all the monsters, the world, it's from the Persona team, so naturally there's a really fantastic aesthetic there. It's their first foray into a next-gen, or I guess I should say current-gen technology. They knew what they were getting into because though all the environments look fantastic, there are very few of them. I guess they just didn't want to push themselves too hard. So the game is great, the aesthetics are great. I'd say the weakest link for me is the story. I know, right? The story is the only thing anyone knew about when the game was coming out, but I gotta say, it's a little... The game decides what happens by asking you questions, either in the nightmares or to make you choose one or two dialogue options while you're conversing with other characters. And your answer to this question affects, you know, a, one of those good or evil bars with red on the one side and blue on the other side. And as you progress through the game, each answer will have the needle sway one way or the other. And then there are points in the game where Vincent behaves a certain way based on how far the needle is in one direction or the other. That would have been interesting like a few years ago before like, I don't know, Heavy Rain and Mass Effect, but it takes you out of it. Why have the bar decide everything? Why not at those points, why don't you just get to make the decision? It's a little alienating. Even more than that, the main problem is that your actions are limited basically to the nightmare and to the bar, the stray sheep where Vincent talks with his friends and drinks and stuff. There are three kinds of things that happens in the game. There's the nightmare, there's the bar, and there are Vincent's interactions between K. Catherine and C. Catherine. But you have no control in any of the scenes with K. Catherine or C. Catherine, which seems like a big misstep because they're supposed to be like the crux of the game, right? But the thing is, I don't really like them. Even by the end, I didn't feel a connection with K. Catherine or C. Catherine. I don't know why either one is likable. I don't get a sense of their personalities, of their desires or their weaknesses or insecurities. All the other NPCs, I get a pretty good feel of their characters. Because you get to see those characters change and grow, you can get pretty attached to the NPCs. But the Catherines are just like plot devices. They don't feel full, they don't feel real. As a result, you don't feel very connected to the decisions that get made regarding them. The other problem is Vincent. In the end, I really like Vincent, but he's too strong of a character to be an effective avatar. But he's also too blank of an 
avatar to be a strong character. You're watching these scenes and you're like, what are you doing, man? Vincent just does the stupidest things when he's with these women. And that would be fine if you like told him to do the stupidest things, but like just watching him do it, if you were, if you could control Vince's actions, the game would be like half as long because the problem would be solved. Vincent's interactions with both women, they're not the way people really relate to each other in intimate relationships. You never feel what I think the creators want you to feel, which is the feeling that you've been in the situation before, or like you could imagine being in this situation with your significant lover. If you've been with someone for like five years, would you really have these really awkward relationships where like nothing gets established? I mean, I don't know, maybe you would if like things are really bad, but if things are really bad, then I think the answer to your relationship problems would be much clearer. Go with the hot one. Basically all the conflict seems are artificial. They're just all these plot devices to keep things going, it feels like, which is a huge shame. In the end, it's just kind of goofy. It feels really Japanese. It feels like the translations are missing something. Even the Persona games, which take place in Japan, don't have that feeling. They usually have great writing. I do have to say, though, towards the end, you start to get really attached to Vincent. Whether or not you care about the Catherines, you start to, like, latch on and you're really proud of him. I mean, you're not playing as a bald space marine. You're playing as, like, a guy who's probably a lot like the guy playing the game. In Waking Life, Vincent is a pushover, but in his dreams, he's like this tough guy that people can really believe in and rally behind. I'm not really sure where the game is set. Everyone has Western names, but there's still a distinctly Japanese feel. Just certain attitudes, like how Vincent feels personally responsible for leading C. Catherine on, even though she's the one that got it wrong. I feel like an American dude to be like, Sorry! And other things, like everyone's talking about curses and rumors. Curses and rumors are actually a big part of like the Personas team shtick. But to hear like grown men talking about it, it feels like, where are we again? Also, Vincent's apartment looks pretty distinctly Japanese. It even has the area where you can take off your shoes. I like some of the characters more than others. I like all of the really sad guys they meet in the bar. Their designs are interesting, their problems are interesting, and their voice actors are great. Toby's also pretty funny because he's just this weird kid, and every time he says something, I'm like, who is this kid? Why is he hanging out with us? I guess Vincent's other friend Johnny is like his senpai, which is another distinctly Japanese relationship that doesn't really translate to American society. Also, while the design of the bar is great, I don't think as many American white collar workers spend their weeknights in bars as the Japanese do. I mean, like every night? So like, yeah, it's really good. It's a little disappointing in parts, especially in the middle where like the initial charm wears off and you're waiting for like things to really change. But in the end, things are pretty cool. I mean, I got a pretty cool ending. I feel like if I got a really lousy ending, I probably might have hated it. The good news is that it's pretty easy to manipulate what endings you get. So if you want to try for new endings, just pull up a guide and give it a shot. Just be sure to keep a few save files. I do have a couple of nitpicks where gameplay is involved. The camera, it's fixed in one position, but you could like switch it to the left or the right but there are some puzzles that require you to go behind the blocks where the camera can't see you which wouldn't be so bad except for some stupid reason they thought it would be a good idea to like to switch the controls so that left goes right and right goes left maybe they thought that would be convenient but i have fallen to my death more than once because of it. You do get used to it. I mean, if you're good at video games, otherwise I'm sorry. The boss stages are usually pretty cool. It's a little more exciting, there's a little more on the line. But again, the camera is a problem because sometimes it'll zoom out to show you what the boss is doing. That's not useful because you really just want to see where you're going, not where you've been. My one other major complaint, and maybe someone disagree with me, is the frame of the Golden Theater. All the options on the title menu are basically treated as different television programs. There's this chick with an afro that acts like the announcer, it really, it really takes you out of it. I'm already playing a video game. Why do I have to pretend it's also like a TV show too? I feel like it cheapens whatever emotional connection someone might actually have if you're playing the game. I'm sure someone designed the character of the Afro girl and we're like, well, we gotta fit her in somewhere. Catherine is weird. It's not what I thought it was at all. When I first saw promotional material for Catherine, I thought it would be like survival horror, not like a really weird gimmicky puzzle game. So it's really weird to me that in the end, I enjoyed the gimmicky puzzle game more than I enjoyed the story. Even though I didn't enjoy chunks of the story, I actually really enjoyed the world. I really enjoyed talking to characters. And in the end, you do feel like you're a part of the world. Catherine doesn't marry its story and its gameplay as well as, say, the Persona series does, but it does all right. Basically, if you like a really weird creative game and you want to see more like it, buy it so that they know you like it so that they'll make more. Maybe they'll even make uh, Persona 5 next. That will probably come out for the PS3 just as the PS4 is being announced if uh, history is any indication.